Since 1973, the year Roe v. Wade passed, nearly 60 million unborn children have been the victims of abortion in the United States. In recent years, there have been nearly 1 million abortions per year, or about 2,500 per day. Sadly, no part of our culture is immune to the horrors of abortion. Even among Christians, abortion has become far too commonplace. According to data from the Guttmacher Institute, 54% of women who have had abortions self-identify as either Catholic or Protestant. According to a national survey conducted by CareNet, nearly 4 in 10 women who have had abortions were attending church at least once per month at the time of their first abortion. So, while we advocate for overturning Roe v. Wade and defunding Planned Parenthood, the reality is that Christians are funding the abortion industry to the tune of an estimated $200 million per year, every year. Think about it. If there are about 1 million abortions per year in the United States, and about 40% of them are among church-going women, then churchgoers are having about 400,000 abortions per year. At $500 per abortion, that's $200 million. In other words, Christians should defund Planned Parenthood simply by not having abortions themselves. We have to overturn Roe versus Wade in our own pews. We have to remove the log in our eye before removing the speck from the culture's eye. So how have we gotten to this point and how can we fix it? One of the main reasons abortion is as much of a problem inside the church as it is outside the church is that too many pastors and church leaders have become reluctant to talk about abortion in church and in the public square. There are a few reasons for this. For one, many priests and pastors are concerned that if they preach about such a sensitive topic, it will offend many people in their congregation especially women who have had abortions and men who have participated in them. Second, politics. For several decades, church leaders have been told that they are not allowed to talk politics from the pulpit. Moreover, abortion has been consistently framed in our culture as a political issue. Put those two things together and you have many pastors saying, I can't talk about abortion in my church because it's a political issue. But there are two reasons this reluctance is unfounded. First, it's a pastor's job to proclaim the forgiveness of all sins to those who trust in Christ. To never talk about abortion as it relates to the cross is to leave many in despair and without hope. Second, pastors do comfortably talk about issues with political implications when they have a ministry response to those issues. Take how to care for the poor. Few issues are more politicized than poverty but pastors talk about it all the time. In other words, pastors have been comfortable talking about poverty because they look at it through the lens of ministry and discipleship. If a pastor can say, our church feeds thousands of poor families in our community every year through our food ministry, then he is not going to be very concerned about the fact that poverty is political. You see where this is headed? Pastors speak about care for the poor because the poor are vulnerable. But so too are the unborn in the womb, and those who have had or are at risk for abortion are vulnerable too. Therefore, like the poor, pastors are called to speak boldly about a ministry and discipleship response for them too. In other words, when a church learns of a couple involved in an unplanned pregnancy, they need to say, that mother, that father, and that unborn child need to become disciples of Jesus Christ. After all, this is why the church exists in the first place, to preach the gospel and make disciples. So churches need to have ministries in place for those facing unplanned, unexpected, or unexpectedly complicated pregnancies so that the local abortion clinic never looks like a more compassionate alternative to the local church. But how will churches learn how to provide this kind of support? After all, isn't that what local pregnancy centers are for? While pregnancy centers, including more than 1,100 CareNet affiliated centers, do amazing work every day to serve people in need, there are only about 2,500 of them in North America. On the other hand, there are an estimated 405,000 churches in the United States. 
If just 1% of them had a pregnancy care ministry, this would be an additional 4,050 life-affirming points of compassion in communities for women and men at risk for abortion. Aside from the sheer scale that church involvement could bring, there is an important distinction between how pregnancy centers work and how churches work. Pregnancy centers are set up to provide short-term care and evangelism. Churches are set up to provide long-term care and discipleship. This is a critical element that is missing from the pregnancy center and pro-life movement. The need to provide longer-term life support for the amazing life decisions that are made every day in pregnancy centers. Clearly, the church's involvement is key to taking the pro-life movement to the next level and significantly reducing the number of abortions, both inside and outside the church. That is why CareNet developed Making Life Disciples, a curriculum that is designed to equip the church to provide compassion, hope, help, and discipleship to women and men considering abortion. This is a game changer. It takes CareNet's decades of experience ministering to the abortion vulnerable and applies it to the church setting, allowing churches to create ministries to address this critical issue without having to worry about offending congregants or wading into murky political waters. How can you get involved? Visit makinglifedisciples.com to join the movement to bring Making Life Disciples to 1,000 churches by the year 2020. When you sign up at makinglifedisciples.com, we will give you the tools and support you need to help you have a conversation with your local church. With God's guidance, this could lead your church to implementing a Making Life Disciples ministry. Join the movement to overturn Roe vs. Wade in our nation's pews and in our nation's communities.